Today we're going to reply to a comment and question from one of the viewers named Corey, and we're going to see if we can give some understanding. So this right here is what it says. It says, LOL, I am a believer in the scriptures, but I am open to challenges of other info in this existence. Now, very good, Corey, because that's a step in the right direction. And understand that there's also a lot of other people who are living today who are also Bible believers, but they're also open to other perspectives, right? And they're not afraid to ask questions and to question and push back on many of the beliefs that they have inherited. And this is a consequence of us being in the information age where we have access to information at our very own fingertips. And never before in history has there been such a time like we live in today. Next part of the question says, so if not the Bible that teaches all knowledgeable understanding is sound doctrine according to prophecy and understanding, then what is? Now, I'm not sure that I understand completely what you're asking, so I'm going to assume that you're asking uh, if the Bible is not the source of all understanding and sound doctrine, then what is? And to answer this question, we're going to have to take a journey back in time, right? Thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of years back into time before humans even had the ability or the necessary skills and the tools to even create a Bible. We're talking about the earliest humans who would have had the slightest concern about biblical sin or wearing mixed fabric clothing or observing a Sabbath day. So sound doctrine to them would have been centered around how to survive in the day to day struggles, right? Sound doctrine to them would have been uh, what are the best ways to find food, water and shelter and how to protect themselves from other predators, other wild animals and beasts of the field? And in other words, they relied on their instincts, intellect and their other human faculties that they developed along with their life experiences for sound doctrine. And this is how they survived the harsh environmental pressures. And so their early survival was based on sound doctrine that allowed later generations like the Mesopotamians to create settled civilizations. Now we're talking about 4,000 BCE, which is still thousands of years before any Bible was created. And to create civilizations, you have to have sound doctrine. So my question to you is, what sound doctrine did they use to do this, right? They were the first to create writing, and without them creating writing, nobody gets a Bible. They use the stars to create a 12 month calendar system. So to them, the use of stars was sound doctrine. And then we have the Egyptians who also created a unique civilization of their own uh, with their own unique writing rules and their own unique culture. And this is still a, a couple thousand years before there was even a Bible. Right. And so they had their own spiritual system with their own understanding of the world and their own understanding of, of their version of God, right? And to them, this was sound doctrine. Why? Because it worked for them. It worked for them, right? And I think we can all agree that you need sound doctrine and a certain set of skills and knowledge to build the pyramids, right? Which is constructed in a way that even people today still can't figure out the sound doctrine that the Egyptians used to build these things, right? They can't figure it out. And the Bible can't provide any practical instruction on how this was done. But what the Bible did provide was sound doctrine for the people of Israel during the times that they created this thing, right? It gave them a set of laws. Um, it gave them certain cultural practices and it gave them a worldview about their God, right? And it talked to them, right? This is what they built for them. And so we're talking right now about the Old Testament right now, but centuries later on, what happened? People of Israel like Paul, they didn't find the Old Testament interpretations and the scriptures to be 100% satisfactory for them. So they created new interpretations. They created new doctrines, which later became new books, which were used by a set of people who identify themselves as Christian for their sound doctrine, right? And so to them, Christ dying and being resurrected, that was sound doctrine, but it was not sound doctrine to the vast majority of the Jews who lived back then and still live today. And then we have to think about all the other cultures that exist, which do not use the Bible as a source of sound doctrine, because it would be ignorant for anyone to think that people who do not use the Bible do not have any source of sound doctrine whatsoever. Right. We know that that doesn't make any sense. And so there's sound doctrine in Hinduism, Buddhism, traditional African religions, Native American religions, 
and just about any religion uh, or religious belief that you can uh, uh, find, you're going to find some sound doctrine, right? That's why the people use them. They found it sound to them and for their society. But obviously you have to have an open mind in order to, uh, to be able to see it. Or you're just going to think Bible, 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 right? But the Bible certainly does have sound doctrine. Understand, for example, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's sound doctrine, right? At least the vast majority of us can agree on that, right? But what is not sound doctrine is uh, putting people to death for the practice of homosexuality, right? It may have been sound doctrine for the society that they lived in when the priest and uh, those uh, higher ups created those laws. But today in America, that's not sound doctrine. And I think most people would agree with that, right? Despite it being something that uh, is claimed to have been from uh, the God of Israel and supposed to be something that's a law forever. Most Bible believing people today, they would find it very hard to justify the death penalty for someone being a homosexual, even if they don't agree with that act, right? They'll just find some clever way to make the verse not mean what it says, or what they'll do is they'll just find uh, uh, the use of Jesus as an escape goat, right? To make the verse disappear and make it seem like it doesn't matter anymore, right? And why do they do that? Because they understand one thing, that it's no longer sound doctrine, right? At least for the majority of the society. And this is including the Bible believers, right? Now, can you see that? So sound doctrine changes, understand. Sound doctrine, it fluctuates depending on the circumstances, depending on uh, the society that you're in, and depending on the desired goals of the people, right? To where it may be sound doctrine one day, like stoning children who are disobedient to their parents, that very same act in another day, right, could be something that doesn't even closely resemble anything imaginable to sound doctrine. And so sound doctrine, it comes from uh, various places. It comes from various people. It comes from various sources, right, and all at a, a different various times, right? And so what makes it sound doctrine is its usefulness in reaching a goal that people have in mind or that groups have in mind. And so hopefully this has been able to help you on this part. Let's go to the next part of the question. They completely whitewash everything to their advantage. And science only seems to serve and support one race on the earth. And, you know, that's the truth that many of the European uh, or people of European descent, um, they had and they still do to a significant degree, have a tendency to whitewash images. We, uh, absolutely. Right. I don't disagree with you one one bit on this. Right. And they have done this to a large degree with a lot of the biblical characters. Christianity is a political tool. And more specifically, it is used as a tool for white supremacy, right? And that's one of the reasons that I suggest certain people to get their minds from underneath the doctrine and its grips, right? Because of the way it's used, right? Because they're not going to stop uh, painting God. They're not going to stop painting Jesus. They're not going to stop painting Moses. They're not going to stop painting Noah in these images that they have been painting them in. And guess what? Neither do most of the people want them to stop painting these images um, in this fashion either, because those are the images that many people have grown accustomed to seeing. And once a person believes a figure to look a certain way and they have grown emotionally attached to those images, then it becomes increasingly difficult to get them to believe and accept something else, even if what they believe is a blatant lie. Right. And blatantly false. Right. And one thing that I will say is that the leaders within this group who call themselves white people, they understand very, very well the power of positioning and the power of controlling the narrative. They understand this thing to a T, right? And we can see it demonstrated um, in the way that they have used historically the biblical tool, right? They understand how this thing works and they use it to their advantage. Now, as far as you saying that science only seems to serve and support one race on the earth, my suggestion is that you look at science and the use of this tool in a more broader sense, because science is a tool that was discovered and is used by humans that allows us to better understand the physical world. And it also allows us to modify the physical world, right? Whether it be for what you want to call good or evil, right? But this tool has nothing to do with physical features or color, right? Or the color of the person who is uh, putting it into practice. Meaning when a person with pinkish yellow skin flips the light switch, right? The light will come on in the exact same way 
that a person with brown skin, when they flip the light switch, it's still going to come on. Science doesn't have the ability to discriminate like humans do, right? At least in those terms. And that's one of the reasons that makes it reliable, right? It doesn't have those type of prejudices. And just to be clear, there are many groups who are involved in the progression of science, right? It's not just one group. And certain groups, they're better in certain areas, right? Depending on what we're talking about. We're talking about making bombs. Certain groups are better. We're talking about making planes or cars, right? Certain groups are better, right? But there are certain groups of people who have developed a hardened mindset that says that science is not something that pertains to them, right? And so they show a, a little interest in it. And uh, by doing so, they cut themselves off from the scientific conversation and many of the areas of progress, right? And by doing so, they never get good at science. Understand, you may find a few of them in there, but not any significant number, right? And because they never get good at science at a, as a group, they distance themselves from science, which gives the impression that science is something that only works for other groups, right? We're talking about a mentality here. We're talking about a mindset here. We're talking about a culture here, right? And a cultural attitude towards the application of science, right? Not a color thing. So hopefully this helps out, right? And you go on to say this, the pyramids have the noses blown off and we're getting vaccinated. Some of us for nothing. Yes, the Sphinx did have its nose taken off, um, but I don't know if these were Europeans who did that, right? If that's what you're pointing to. And as far as vaccination goes, I don't know enough um, uh, about vaccinations to really have any valid opinion as to if these shots uh, are for nothing, right? That's something that people have to uh, research for themselves or, or seek better medical advice, right? But I would hope that people wouldn't create um, uh, shots that serve no uh, purpose at all. So you continue to say this, LOL. I say all that to say, what do you think, my brother, about Matthew 24 prophecy to end times and revelations of all these false doctrines. I don't think much about Matthew 24, right? It's another one of those prophecies that are vague and what it's doing is predicting something that um, has always happened, right? It's talking about false prophets coming in the end. Um, but uh, when you read, you'll see that they're already claiming that false prophets and false brethren were around them during the time that they're writing this, right? So it's not saying anything special to me, right? It's talking about kingdom fighting against kingdom, right? And that's another thing. This is something that has always happened with humans. And it still does today. So, like I said, I don't see anything special with this either. And as far as the end times, the writers thought it was the end times 2,000 years ago while they were writing the scriptures, right? They thought the end was at hand, right? Well, we'll talk about that later on in other videos. And so you continue to ask the question, who's the author of life and death? I don't know who's the author of life and death. And that's the most honest answer that I or anyone else could actually give you, right? People don't know what right? what people are doing is they have speculations and they're making claims about who the author is, right? We don't even know if it's a who it could be a what it could be a it or it can be after a completely different existence that we have no clue about. Now, I do have my own speculations and my own claims, but ultimately the answer is I don't know. Right. And you finish saying this. I love your stuff and agree and disagree with some stuff, but forever you're my brother. If you read this, do a video, bro. I just want to get your take on that. Be well and peace always to you, bro. Looking forward to more content. It's a great time to be alive with all this knowledge. Well, thanks again, Corey. I appreciate you very much for leaving the comment and leaving your question. And um, um, uh, prosperity and peace to you. Hopefully this has been able to give you some clarity from my perspective. And anyone else out there that has questions, be sure to leave them down below. And so I want to thank you for watching all the way into the end. My name is Brooklyn St. Michael, and I'll see you in the free world.